Hi, my name is Diane, and this is My Pink Bathtub Knits. Welcome. Welcome if you're new, and welcome if you are a returning subscriber. Are you ready to go on a road trip? Well, a few weeks back, I saw a posting that there was going to be a new woolen mill open in Manitoba, and I thought, why not give this a look? So I called up my friend Jude. Jude is not her real name. We just call her that. And I'm called Jude as well. And decided, hey, let's go out for the day and see what we can find. Now, last time we went on a road trip with you, we went to southern Manitoba. This time we're going more west. So it's completely different scenery. Pretty much flat land, farming land. But I think it was worth the trip. So we are going to Austin, Manitoba. We're going to stop at McGregor and Portage la Prairie on the way home. And let's see what kind of adventures we can get into. There's Dude, she's our driver. Hey Dude, have you ever been to a wool mill before? I've never been to a wool mill before. Me neither, let's do this. It'll be an adventure. 100%. Okay. It's bustling. You can't even get a place to park. Welcome to McGregor. We're looking for the thrift store. Oh, there, there it is. is. It's right here. Let's go in, dude, and find yeah. some treasures. We're going to have a look in here. But look, we the traffic's so busy. Oh, my goodness. Perfect. Jude finds the strangest things at thrift stores, and that's not the strangest thing she found. Just wait. But here is my find from the thrift store. These clover needles, circular needles, 5 millimeter, 36 inch in length. They didn't have a price on them, so I went up to the table. They haven't even been opened. I said, can you tell me how much you would like for these? She took a look at it and said to me, would 25 cents be okay? A quarter. A quarter. This is how much they sell for online. Start the car. Well, after we went to the thrift store, we saw a library just across the way and we thought, Hey, we're librarians. Let's go and check out what's in the library. And we had a little bathroom break while we were there, too. It was a charming little small town library. Um, I chatted up the librarians that were working and told them that we were from the Winnipeg area and that we were in the same field. And the reason why we were in the area was because we were going to go to the mills opening. And they piped up, well, Linda works here. And I thought, well, that's nice, but who's Linda? Well, Linda is the owner of the mill. Linda's a librarian just like us. Linda likes to knit just like me. And Linda and Brian are the owners of the mill. So we went there in search of Linda. So here's some video of when we first arrived at the mill. Um, it was very busy in there. It was very crowded. So I tried to do my best. Why don't you take a look and see what you think? This is where you turn? Oh, no, you're even better. Lots of farm stuff out here. Yeah. We're not lost yet. Not yet. But we might get lost. Stay tuned. Austin, Manitoba. Yes. Not Texas, Manitoba. Phil's Corner Store. Yep. Check. Oh, Division Street. That's it. That's Ooh, it. Division oh my Street. gosh. Oh my gosh, the crowds. 
Look at all the cars. But they're right in town. Oh, it's right here. I did get a chance to speak with Linda. I would have loved to have interviewed her, but it was very, very loud in there. That is why I put music on and dubbed all the noise out. Um, but I did ask her some questions about her new enterprise. And I shared with her that we were also librarians and that we had come from Winnipeg area to meet her. And she was very, very happy to meet us. She was a lovely, lovely lady. I asked her, oh, do you dye all the yarn yourself? And she said, yes, but quite most of it is just natural from, from the animals. So um, that was really interesting. And then we bumped into her husband, Brian, and introduced ourselves. And right away he said, oh, are you the librarians from Winnipeg? I mean, it's a small town. Word gets out. I want to share with you what I bought. I wasn't really going there to buy yarn, but I mean, I was in a mill. There was yarn. I met the couple that produced the yarn. I mean, I got to buy the yarn. Uh, I did ask Brian, do you have your own sheep or your own animals? And he said, no, that he just gets it all locally. He just goes around and picks it up from local farmers. So that was kind of interesting. So, I wish you could touch this and feel this because this is incredibly soft. It is 100% alpaca. It is a natural color. So this is the color from the alpaca itself. I think it would look quite nice on me. It is 150 grams. It is a three ply. I'm going to say this is kind of, well, three ply. I guess it's like a DK weight. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Uh, I did talk to the lady when I went to purchase it, and I also talked to Linda about it because I only have 750 yards, and that is all they had. Um, so I said I would want it, I would like to make, maybe I'll make a vest. I'm thinking maybe a vest would be a nice idea. But they said it will grow. When you knit with it, it will grow. I've never knit with 100% alpaca, so this is going to be a treat and an experiment all in one.
and there are draws. So I am hoping with my fingers crossed that either myself or Jude wins uh, a gift certificate. Uh, this mill is does have an Instagram account. I'm going to link it below. And they are going to have a website where you can purchase their product from, but it is not up and running as of yet. So when it does get up, she said it was going to be up later in the week. I will edit this video and put the link for the website below in it as well for you. The other part of the, the um, visit that we had is they were giving tours and it was in the second part, the back part of the building. So we had to sign up for it when we came in. And as I mentioned, there was so many people there. We kind of had to wait. And I mean, also, I was like working the room and chatting with people and uh, just looking at all the yarn and all the things. And um, we missed our, our tour. We didn't hear our name being called because it was so loud. So when we finally kind of mulled around that area waiting to get in, we met a lovely lady named Margaret. And Margaret was a local in the area. And so we asked Margaret, where is there a good place to eat lunch? And she suggested a few places, but she said they might not be open. Well, it was a Saturday and they weren't open. So I suggested to Margaret, well, you know, you could just take us home with with you and feed us yourself. And she would have, but Margaret had to go to a funeral and she was pressed for time and she was waiting to get in this tour. So because our names were not called and dude went up and talked to the lady who was letting people in, they called our names first. And I essentially just grabbed Margaret's hand and brought her along in with us, even though we kind of snuck Margaret in. But if Margaret didn't have that funeral to go to, we would have been eating uh, leftover meatloaf at her house promptly after the tour. So here is the second part of the uh, video of the mill. Now, all of their equipment is through the um, purchase from Belfast Minis, Mini Mills. And um, they have information about that on their Instagram page as well. It was, again, very loud. There was two tours going on at the same time. So what ended up happening is I was kind of falling behind the tour so I could actually videotape the equipment. And uh, I didn't get all the details. And then I am just have music playing again with all of the other implements that turn the loose wool into yarn. There's a carding machine that takes all of the rough uh, thicker hairs out. Then they uh, turn it into these tubes that end up getting stretched out. And um, I'm not explaining this very well because I wasn't paying attention because I was a little bit farther behind taking video once people moved out of the way. So here is the video of um, the rest of the tour of the Austin Woolen Mills and I hope you enjoy it. This is the washer, 181 degrees to wash the raw wool. That looks like this. This is one of the dyers, the dyeing pot. is where they dry it after it's laundered.
just uh, left. It was super packed in there, so hopefully we got some good footage to share with you all. Uh, I met some really cool people, including a lady who owns three alpacas, and she is interested in selling uh, selling their wool to this uh, new mill. So it's very exciting. What did you think, dude? I thought it was super exciting and interesting. I've never seen that process before. But one of the most exciting things was how this small community is all here sharing the, you know, happiness of these people starting this new business. Yeah, 100%. Supporting them. They rallied together. Okay, we're going to go for lunch and we'll be back in a moment. So Margaret was correct. There was indeed nowhere for us to eat in Austin, Manitoba on a Saturday. So we made our way back to McGregor and uh, wanted to see if there was something there. Uh, of course, we kind of saw a squirrel, also known as a thrift store, and we stopped in there first. And then we made our way to a charming little place called the Bison General. Um, and I'm so glad we found it because it was a really lovely little kind of bistro cafe place that sold local products and the owner was really nice. Um, it was a nice little surprise in the middle of a very small town. And after we ate, we decided to go back through Portage La Prairie, which is actually my father's hometown. He grew up in that area. It is big farming community as well. And uh, we went to a couple more thrift stores, which I will show you my finds. And we discovered a monument that I did not know existed in Portage. He's like, um, who doesn't want that guy? Look, look at his hands behind his back. Napoleon, or yeah, he's got a little telescope. Is, is do you have a thank you speech for that award you're holding? No, I'd like to accept this award on behalf of all the knitters. We went to a couple of thrift stores in Portage de Prairie, we also call it Plap. P-L-A-P, Plap, or Portage. My father grew up in Portage, just outside of Portage, and he grew up on a farm. And my grandfather, his father, owned it. And he had um, worked on it with his father. And it is still owned today um, by my family. My one cousin runs it with his children. So it has been in our family for over 100 years. Fun fact. So in one of the um, thrift stores, they had a rather large um, crafting section. Normally, I've never really had success finding yarn in thrift stores. 
Um, but this kind of caught my eye out of the side and I took a look at it and I thought, oh, this is interesting. And this is the yarn that I saw and I love the whole tweediness of it. And I thought it would make a really cute fox or some sort of a knitted animal. I really, really liked it. And I kind of got almost three, I would say this is almost a full skein. It doesn't have a label on it. But look at what the name of the company is. It's that company we don't know how to pronounce. Sheepskis, sheepskis, sheepskis. I've never had any of this yarn. It is a vintage brand of it, obviously. And this is called Ahoy. It is made in Holland. And the specs on it is 55% virgin wool, 35% rayon, and 10%, I guess, nylon, vignon. I don't know what vignon is. But I thought it was quite lovely. A dollar, a dollar, and 60 cents because it didn't have a label. They are 50 gram, gram uh, balls and they are 90 meters each. So I think I could make mittens, something with them with this wool in it, the wool content. And I really like the look of it. So that was my other score from the thrift store. We decided to do a little googly Google to see if there's anything else possibly that we could find on before we traveled home. Um, the majority of the day was at the mill and we discovered a monument of sorts in Portage de Prairie and I was quite put back by this because I've gone to Portage my entire life. I practically grew up there in the summers. We went there every summer. My grandparents lived there. We had family reunions there and I did not know the existence of this monument and the monument I'm speaking of is the world's largest coca-cola can yes it's a thing I witnessed it and here you go enjoy The day was really, um, I would say, filled with making new connections. It was so nice to meet so many people. It was absolutely wonderful to see how the community uh, came out to support this new business, a business from a librarian nonetheless. Um, we got a couple of really cool finds, um, maybe except for the, the statue dude, dude picked out at the thrift store. I mean, the jury's still out on that one. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was just a great day to catch up with a dear friend. We ended up solving the world's problems on our road conversation home, as we always do. And um, it was a beautiful day to go out and just to clear our heads and just to do something different. So I'm so glad I went. The Austin Wool mill is soon going to be open for business online and as I mentioned when it is I will be promptly adding that to this video so thanks for watching tell me about a cool road trip that you've done with one of your besties recently hey and if you've watched a few of my episodes and you haven't yet done so think about subscribing it costs you nothing and it brings me joy Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.